Greetings brave souls, and welcome to Funan Reviews. Today we abandon our usual antics for something far more… sinister. Indeed we venture into the shadowy bone-chilling heart of Arizona. Arizona, famed for its scorching deserts and peculiar fashion, conceals a dark realm of paranormal activity. We're delving into ghost stories that would make even a cactus tremble, and believe me, those are hardy beings. So brace yourselves, as we embark on a spine-tingling journey through Arizona's most haunted places. Prepare, for we are about to unveil the eerie tales and ghostly encounters that haunt these lands. We'll be sifting through fact and spooky fiction, or at least attempting to, because sometimes the truth is far more terrifying than any tale we could conjure. Steady your nerves, for we are about to meet some permanent residents who never truly left. This promises to be a chilling experience, or at the very least, hauntingly entertaining. Let's begin! First stop on our haunted hot list, the Jerome Grand Hotel. This place is about as subtle as a ghost in a glass elevator, and trust me, it's got stories. We're talking full-on apparitions, unexplained noises, and enough cold spots to make you think you wandered into a meat locker. The Jerome Grand Hotel used to be the United Verde Hospital. Hospitals see a lot of things, most of them not so pleasant. So it stands to reason that some folks might have unfinished business. And what better place to hang around than the very building where it all went down? Now, let's talk about the guests. Not the ones checking in and out, but the permanent residents. The ghosts. People have reported seeing shadowy figures and doors slamming shut. Room 31 is a hotbed of paranormal activity. Guests feel an oppressive presence, like something is watching them. Some claim to see a ghostly woman in a white dress, and you might hear children playing. Remember, this was a hospital. Their laughter echoes through the halls long after their time. But it's not just the guests who have stories to tell. The staff at the Jerome Grand Hotel have their fair share of ghostly encounters too. Housekeepers have reported seeing objects move on their own, like someone's tidying up after themselves. Except there's no one there. One housekeeper even claimed to have seen a ghostly figure of a nurse. Maybe she's just trying to finish up her rounds. It's enough to make you want to leave a good tip, just in case. The maintenance staff have their own tales of terror. They've reported hearing strange noises in the walls and disembodied voices whispering their names. It's all in a day's work at the Jerome Grand Hotel, where the guests are lively and the ghosts are even livelier. Alright thrill seekers, let's mosey on down to our next stop, the Birdcage Theatre in Tombstone. Built in 1881, during Tombstone's silver boom, the Birdcage Theatre wasn't just a place for entertainment, it was a 24-7 den of spirited activity. We're talking gambling, drinking, brawls, shootouts, you name it, this place probably saw it. Legend has it that over 26 souls met their untimely demise within these very walls. With that many restless spirits roaming around, it's no wonder the Birdcage Theatre is considered one of the most haunted places in America. The Birdcage Theatre has it all ghostly apparitions, disembodied voices, and even the occasional phantom piano player. You see, back in the day, this place was home to a magnificent 1,200 pound mahogany bar shipped all the way from Germany. That's right, these cowboys knew how to drink in style. Now, this bar witnessed its fair share of brawls, and rumour has it that more than a few unfortunate souls met their end leaning against it. Today, visitors and staff claim to see shadowy figures bellying up to the bar, perhaps looking for one last drink. And who knows, maybe they're ordering a spectral shot for the road. But the spirits here aren't just content with hanging out at the bar. Oh no, they like to put on a show too. People have reported seeing ghostly figures on the stage, dancing and singing as if the curtain never closed on their final act. Some even claim to hear the faint sounds of music and laughter echoing through the theatre, a ghostly reminder of the birdcage's raucous past.
One of the most infamous spirits said to haunt the Birdcage Theatre is that of Margarita, a Spanish dancer who was deeply in love with one of the performers. Tragically, her love was unrequited, and she was killed in a jealous rage by a rival dancer. Talk about a drama queen! Now legend has it that Margarita's spirit still haunts the theatre, her ghostly cries of anguish echoing through the balconies. Some say she's searching for her lost love, while others believe she's seeking revenge on the one who wronged her. Either way, it's safe to say you don't want to be caught alone in the birdcage theatre with a heartbroken ghost. But Margarita isn't the only one with a bone to pick. Visitors have reported feeling cold spots, hearing disembodied whispers, and even being touched by unseen hands. It's enough to make you want to sleep with one eye open, and maybe a six-shooter under your pillow. Alright, so you've checked into the Hotel Monte Vista. Congratulations! You've officially opted for the Haunted Suite upgrade whether you wanted it or not. This place has it all ghost stories, spooky vibes and probably some questionable room service, knowing my luck. I mean, hopefully they've updated the menu since the early 1900s. This grand old dame has seen it all. Movie stars, gangsters, you name it. Rumour has it a few of them decided to check out but forgot to leave. You know, the classic dying in a hotel room blunder. So, buckle up, grab a mini bar snack. At your own risk, those things are ancient, because we're about to dive into the spooky tales of the Hotel Monte Vista. First up on our ghostly room service menu is the Phantom Bellboy. Apparently, this spectral employee still thinks he's on the clock, even though you know he's pushing up daisies. Guests have reported seeing him out of the corner of their eye, lugging around luggage like some kind of ethereal bellhop. Listen, I'm not saying ghosts aren't allowed to be hardworking, I just think it's a raw deal. And if that doesn't make you want to sleep with the lights on, how about this? Room 210. They say a woman in a rocking chair haunts this room. That's right. She just chills and rocks back and forth for eternity. Honestly, if ghosts are real, that sounds kind of relaxing. Maybe she's got cable. Now, the Hotel Monte Vista has a star-studded history. We're talking John King, Carol Lombard, even the infamous Bugsy Siegel. And where there are celebrities, there are bound to be some juicy ghost stories. Rumour has it, some guests have reported seeing a shadowy figure resembling John Wayne himself, hanging out in the hallway by room 220. Look, I'm not saying it's definitely John Wayne's ghost. Maybe he just forgot something. Maybe it's his lucky bolo tie. Or maybe, just maybe, it's his restless spirit, doomed to wander the halls for eternity. Either way, I'm adding ghost hunting in a cowboy hat to my bucket list. Stay tuned, because we're about to delve even deeper into the eerie history of the Hotel Monte Vista. You wouldn't want to miss this checkout time. Alright folks, buckle up. We're heading into the heart of Arizona, to a place called Vulture City, home to the Vulture Mine. Now this place is practically oozing history, and not the sunshine and rainbows kind. We're talking gold rush, desperate prospectors, and enough shady dealings to make your head spin. This mine, let me tell you, it saw its fair share of tragedy. Accidents, shootouts, you name it. People died here, and not always in the most pleasant ways. So, naturally, rumors started swirling. This place, they said, was cursed, haunted by the spirits of those who met their unfortunate ends. Now, I'm not saying I believe in curses, but I've seen enough weird stuff to know that dismissing them entirely is playing life on hard mode. And this mine, this mine's got all the ingredients for a haunting stew. We're talking lingering energy, unfinished business, and enough residual spookiness to make your hair stand on end. So, grab your hard hats and your ghost hunting gear, because we're about to descend into the depths of Vulture Mine. And trust me, you're going to want to stick around for this. Legend has it that the most active spirit here is that of Henry Wickenburg, 
the man who discovered the gold that fueled this whole town. They say he's still protective of his claim, watching over the mine from the beyond. Some say they've seen him, a shadowy figure lurking in the tunnels guarding his gold. Then there's the story of the hanging tree. Back in the day, they used a particular mesquite tree as a makeshift gallows. Justice was swift and brutal. Now people claim to hear whispering voices around that tree, even see the ghostly figures of the hanged swaying in the breeze. And if that's not enough, we've got the story of Shotgun Cheney. They say he was a miner who met a particularly gruesome end in a mining collapse. Now, his ghost supposedly wanders the tunnels, dragging his pickaxe behind him, the sound echoing in the darkness. So yeah, this place is a veritable buffet of ghost stories. And whether you believe them or not, you gotta admit, it makes for one heck of a creepy atmosphere. Walking through these tunnels, you can feel the weight of history pressing down on you. The air is thick with the dust of a thousand stories. You can almost hear the clang of pickaxes, the shouts of miners. And that is what makes a place like this truly unsettling. It's a reminder of our own mortality. These miners were once just like us, chasing dreams. So as we emerge from Vulture Mine, we're left with more questions than answers. Are the spirits of Vulture City real? One thing's for sure, Vulture Mine stays with you long after you've left it. Okay gang, prepare yourselves. We're about to step through the gates of Yuma Territorial Prison, a place where the sun bakes the earth and the air itself feels heavy with the weight of history. This wasn't your cushy white collar criminal resort, oh no. This was the Wild West, and this prison was as unforgiving as the desert that surrounded it. For over three decades, this place housed the worst of the worst murderers, thieves, outlaws with grit under their fingernails and desperation in their eyes. The conditions were brutal, the punishments harsher. Death was a constant companion, whether from disease, violence, or the unforgiving heat. Now it stands silent, a monument to a darker time. But don't let the stillness fool you, because they say the walls of Yuma Territorial Prison still remember. They whisper with the stories of the souls who perished within their confines. So if you're ready to confront the ghosts of Arizona's past, then steal yourselves, because we're about to delve into a place where the living fear to tread and the dead refuse to leave. Imagine, if you will, the oppressive heat bearing down on you, the stench of sweat and fear clinging to the air. You're surrounded by the clanging of iron bars, the muffled sobs of the damned. This was the reality for the inmates of Yuma Territorial Prison. One of the most haunted areas is Cell Block 11, also known as the Dark Cell. This subterranean dungeon was reserved for the most troublesome inmates, a place of utter darkness and despair. They say the cries of the men who suffered there can still be heard, echoing through the empty cells. Then there's the story of John Ryan, a notorious outlaw known for his brutality. He was killed by a fellow inmate within these very walls. Now guards and visitors report seeing his menacing figure lurking in the shadows, his eyes burning with a cold, vengeful light. And let's not forget about the lady in black, a mysterious figure seen gliding through the cemetery outside the prison walls. Some say she's the ghost of a heartbroken woman searching for her imprisoned lover, forever bound to the sight of her sorrow. Walking through these desolate cell blocks, it's impossible not to feel a sense of unease. The air is heavy with the weight of suffering, of regret, of lives cut short and dreams turned to dust. Each stone, each rusty bar, seems to whisper tales of despair. You see, it's one thing to hear about these stories, but it's another entirely to stand in the very place where they unfolded. To feel the chill of the air, to hear the creak of the floorboards beneath your feet, to imagine the anguish etched into the walls themselves. As we leave the imposing shadow of Yuma Territorial Prison behind, it's with a newfound respect for the power of history and a lingering sense of disquiet. 
The ghosts of the past may not always reveal themselves in a blinding flash of light or a blood-curdling scream. Sometimes they linger in the silence, in the shadows, in the stories whispered on the wind. And sometimes that's all it takes to send a shiver down your spine. Well, there you have it, folks. Another spooky adventure in the books. We've descended into mines, walked through prison cells, and faced down the ghosts of Arizona's past. Whether you believe in the paranormal or not, you got to admit, these places hold a certain undeniable energy. Thank you for joining us on this haunting journey through Arizona's most haunted places. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more spine-tingling content. Until next time, stay curious and stay spooky. Hey.